Okay, so starting Laura, you and Esther, you. So, um, I thought that we'd start off with the big question. So, why study law at UNSW? What what draws you to UNSW? Well, um, if you are a prospective postgraduate student, and if you're wanting to study at UNSW, you'll actually be able to study at a university ranked 14th worldwide. Um, now that's a pretty exciting ranking for us. It's in a QS world rankings uh, by university subject in 2020, and we're in pretty good company up there. So um, 14th worldwide uh, amongst the likes of Harvard, Cambridge, Hong Kong University. Uh, we've got lots in there. We've also got uh, 18,000 alumni practicing law in over 90 countries across the world. So by becoming a UNSW law student, you'll actually become a part of this huge engaged alumni network. At UNSW Law, we have 10 research centers and five affiliated research centers. And they're into a range of areas um, such as indigenous law, um, international law, and it really means that you'll be taught by academics that are leading research in their fields and are then able to pass on those research learnings to you in the classroom. Um, and our classes are actually taught in small interactive classes in seminar style. Um, this is something that was pioneered in Australian law teaching by UNSW Law and something that we're incredibly proud of. Um, so these small interactive classes mean that it will generally be you um, and your lecturer or your tutor and only about 30 peers. At UNSW Law, you're not going to be taught in huge lecture theatres or in huge um, you know, teaching rooms. It is that intimate teaching experience to ensure that you are understanding and able to interact with this element of the law that you're learning. Um, our students find that really, really helpful and it is something that they love and something that we're very well known for. At UNSW Law, we also have a dedicated law careers service. Now this is really the bridge between studying law at UNSW and going out into your legal career because this law career service sets you up with help on writing your application for clerkship. It sets you up in finding work experience. It will also help you um, by having student panels or career panels where you can understand the experiences of our, our students and they'll be able to share that with you as well. So um, we're all, uh, the reason that we're all here and we're all pretty aware that at the moment it's a little bit hard to have face-to-face -face events and that means it's a little bit hard to have face-to-face -face classes as well. As you can imagine, UNSW is a pretty uh, busy and well-populated place. Um, on any given day, there's about 30,000 people on campus, which is pretty scary um, when you think about it in terms of COVID times. Um, but I wanted to assure you and kind of address it at the start here that um, our cohort, while we are separated, we are still connected. Um, UNSW remains dedicated to providing a world-class education. Um, so at the moment, all courses are being delivered online. So for the duration of term two, those courses will be online and um, we will reassess the situation as it moves forward. I think we've really been able to prove to ourselves and also our students that we can deliver our classes online. While it's not um, our preferred method of teaching and it's not what we had in mind for this year, it is something that we've been able to do. And it's been actually really quite amazing to see the connection um, of our students and of our academics online. There's uh, a lot of different platforms that we're teaching across based on what subjects you're doing. So it might be that you have a Zoom class. Um, it might be that you have a Microsoft Teams class, um, depending on what your lecturer is delivering. We've also got uh, quite a few instances where our academics are creating pre-recorded videos for you to understand too. Um, that might be in a situation where I've put a call out for frequently asked questions and then they'll create a video with all of the answers to the FAQs and send it out to you. There might be um, video delivery of um, people from industry presenting. So there's lots of different ways that we're making it work. But of course, we do um, look forward to the day that we can be back on campus and seeing everyone's smiling faces. Um, we've also got online academic support through our student consultations. We've got our law career service. They've gone digital as well. So they've got an online hub that's especially helpful for preparing for clerkships. Um, and they're also running quite a few digital panel sessions as well. Um, and our postgraduate peer mentoring is running virtually too. 
Okay, so um, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with UNSW. I'm not sure if any of you um, were current students or were past students of UNSW. If you were, welcome. If you weren't, welcome as well. We're still um, open for you to that study any and all of our programs. Um, but our academic calendar has had a few changes. Uh, last year, we transitioned to a um, academic calendar based on three terms and a summer term, as opposed to the traditional two semester academic calendar that we previously had and that you may be used to um, at some other universities. So one of the main reasons that we made this transition is to give you greater flexibility in your studies. Um, so our academic calendar, while you're still doing eight subjects across the year, you're actually able to plan out those eight subjects across three 10 week terms. So what that means for you, and this is an example of an LLM study plan or a Masters of Law study plan um, right now. Um, but what that means for you is it really means you have the opportunity to make choices based on your life outside of study. So it might be that you're working at the same time as studying. It might be that you have family commitments. Uh, you might be planning on going on some big, great holiday, although I think it would have to be a virtual holiday at the moment or a domestic one. But, um, you know, you can really fit your study around those other commitments. So this is an example of how someone might plan their um, LLM, which is a one-year program with eight subjects. Um, and this is how they might plan that to fit around some other commitments in the term two period. So at the moment, we've actually just started term two teaching that started yesterday um, and term three will begin in September. Okay, so life as a UNSW law student, I'm going to delve into our programs pretty shortly, um, but I wanted to touch, before we go into that, I wanted to touch on um, the other things that happen at UNSW law that you'll definitely find um, really useful, particularly um, for you, Lillian, in the JD program, uh, just because PLT is a little bit of a shorter program, you often can't take advantage of all of the um, opportunities. Um, but one of the things that our JD students really enjoy is the opportunity to take part in internships with our industry partners. And the law faculty works really hard to create these industry partnerships um, with top tier law firms, small startups and everything in between to really give you the opportunity to experience the full spectrum um, and have that experience ready for you when you graduate as well. Another thing that's really popular with our students is overseas electives. Um, so taking an elective from an overseas university and traveling overseas to um, undertake that. Of course, at the moment, uh, we're, we're not doing that, but uh, we're really excited to start it again once all the COVID stuff settles down. Um, our UNSW Law Society is our student society for law students run by law students. Uh, we have a specific postgraduate um, portfolio for the Law Society and they look after a lot of things like our postgrad peer mentoring. We have legal clinics. The Kingsford Legal Centre is probably our most well known. So all uh, JD and undergrad law students take part in the Kingsford Legal Centre Clinic and actually under the guidance of a legal professional guide uh, disadvantaged members of our community. And of course, another really popular one is mooting and skills competitions, um, which we do participate in both, both locally, domestically and internationally and our students see a lot of success in those which is something we're really proud of. Okay, I might dive into our study options. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the Juris Doctor now, the JD, um, and I might um, at the end of this, Lillian, if you have any questions, um, we'll wait till the end of the presentation and I'm happy to run through anything with you. So the Juris Doctor is a three-year degree, so three years full-time, but we do have quite a lot of students that study it part-time and work at the same time as well, so you can space that out. Um, and of course, with the three-plus academic calendar, you know, you can really plan your study around when you're going to be working. So this is designed for students from both a law, uh, sorry, from a law background. So if you've done an undergrad in another area and now you're wanting to get a qualification that enables you to practice law, um, then of course this is the degree for you. Uh, the structure is 17 compulsory courses and seven elective courses. There's some really interesting courses in there and really, really broad 
um, course areas depending on what area the law interests you the most. So that includes things like crime in the criminal process, lawyers, ethics and justice, federal constitutional law, law in the global context and commercial law. Uh, for the Juris Doctor, there are Commonwealth supported places available for domestic students. Um, and those students would apply for those places through UAC. Um, and we also, excitingly, have pathways with Oxford and Hong Kong University um, to allow you to actually get a degree from UNSW and a degree from Oxford or a degree from Hong Kong University um, in a pathway partnership agreement. Um, and it will only take you three and a half years, which is uh, pretty cool. Something that a lot of our students are excited about. And um, we had our week last week and had a number of students asking about that. So we're excited to start that up again shortly when we can travel again. Um, I've also included, oops, gone one slide too far. I've also included this slide um, from one of our alumni, Matthew Baker. He was recently nominated for the Lawyers Weekly Top 30 Under 30 Law Awards. Um, and I thought I'd include this quote, which I really like from him. Um, so I wanted to study law at one of the world's leading law schools. What also set UNSW apart for me was the caliber of the faculty and relatively small class sizes, which gives you direct access to some of the world's most respected legal minds. Um, so we're very proud of all of our graduates um, and particularly proud of Matthew in the last few weeks for being uh, nominated for that award. Uh, PLT. Um, so the Graduate Diploma of Legal Professional Practice is our practical legal training. Um, this began, this program only began uh, last, last term. So term one was our first intake and term three will be our second intake for the program. So um, this is also probably interesting for you, Lillian, if you are interested in practicing law after your Juris Doctor, because you will have to do a PLT and to be admitted to the Supreme Court. Um, so the duration is 20 weeks full time. It's one week face to face. So the first five days that runs in um, our O week during term three. Um, of course, if you're studying in term one, it would be O week in term one. Um, and it has 19 weeks of online coursework as well. It's open to both UNSW and non-UNSW graduates. Um, so yeah, we're happy for you to come in if you've got a Juris Doctor or a Bachelor of Laws from another university. There's lots of unique work experience opportunities as a part of this, including a work practicum. Um, if you are not interested in doing work experience for your second placement, you can do the work practicum as well, which will give you a really um, broad portfolio of legal experiences that you can um, then bring into your next career. Um, and of course, um, bring your own, or you can apply to be one of, in one of our legal in-house clinics. So Kingsford Legal Centre, Human Rights Clinic, uh, Land and Environment Court Clinic, Police Powers Clinic. Um, we do have a session going into a lot more detail about the PLT tomorrow at five o'clock. So if you are interested in coming along to that session, I'd really recommend it. Um, also, I've got some events at the end of this presentation where I'll um, talk a little bit more about um, some of the ways you can find out about our programs. So the next slide I had was about the Masters of Laws. Um, and I don't think we have anyone interested in it yet, but it is a really exciting program. So I will touch on it because it might be something that you're interested in doing further down the track. Um, so this is a one year full-time program open to both lawyers and non-lawyers. Um, and it allows you to really specialize in a certain area of law. So those include Chinese international business and economics law, corporate commercial and taxation law, criminal justice and criminology, dispute resolution, environmental law and sustainable development, human rights law and policy, international law, media, intellectual property and technology law, or you have the opportunity to choose subjects from all around those specialisations and do a more generalist degree. Um, and this is Angelica, another one of our students that was nominated for the Lawyers Weekly 30 Under 30 Awards. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna grab this drink of water. And um, she said, studying my LLM at UNSW has been empowering as I'm surrounded by academics and like-minded professionals who are passionate about their respective fields and are seen as the go-to person for a particular area of the law. Where else would you be taught by a prominent judge of the Supreme Court of New South Wales and lecturers from top tier and international law firms? They're truly experts in their fields and to be taught by them has been an absolute privilege. So, um, again, love hearing from our students, particularly students uh, um, doing exciting things. 
So the last part um, of my presentation is just to give you guys a bit of a shameless plug for some of our upcoming events that I think you'll be interested in if you're interested in studying at UNSW Law. So the first um, is, well, they're all part of a series called Meet the Masters. The first session we'll be running is a PLT session with Vedna Javan, who is the program director for PLT. She'll be really diving into um, all of the different aspects of UNSW's PLT and talking more about the course uh, load of the PLT and what you might learn. She'll also be interviewing two uh, current PLT students to share their experience with us. Um, so that's on the 16th of June. We've got two sessions running, um, the 12-15 session and the 6-15 session. We're also um, going to be giving some top line info about PLT tomorrow as well, if you are interested in that. Um, but I would definitely, definitely recommend coming along to meet the masters for the PLT session. That'll be really interesting. Uh, the second Meet the Masters session we're running is Juris Doctor. Um, so this is going to be run by Paul Kildia, who is the JD Program Director, and also Mira Sanruk. Um, she is an academic um, that teaches into the Juris Doctor, and she'll be exploring some of the teaching areas that you do, and she'll do a little bit of a masterclass with you. So hopefully you'll learn about our programs, but also learn a little something about the law. That's on Wednesday, the 17th of June at 5.15. Um, and I can see Lillian has popped in the Meet the Masters uh, registration link there. Fantastic. And the final one is Meet the Masters with um, Professor Natalie Klein, who's our LLM program director. She, uh, this one's going to be really interesting. So even if you're not interested in studying the LLM, but you are interested in the law, I'd also recommend coming along to this because Natalie's going to be giving a um, lecture about the international law implications of COVID-19 and cruise ships. So a very topical issue at the moment uh, and hopefully, yeah, we'll all learn something. So that's on the 18th of June at 5.15.